Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Not sure where you're calling in from uh, or where you're watching from. Um, I'm going to spend the next probably 30, 40 minutes um, going through, first of all, an introduction to M2 Cloud and then discuss a few different um, scenarios that might currently be affected by our remote working situation and how we can overcome um, that disconnection. Okay, so first of all, things working. So I think we all find that staying connected is now more important than it ever has been before with us all being reliant on accessing to remote services to, to do our daily work and to operate. So RIB as a group uh, is focused and has been for a long time on a remote access first philosophy. Um, with cloud-based systems, uh, artificial intelligence and mobility as, as real focus points in our solutions. We've got a long pedigree uh, going back over 50 years of, of developing solutions for the construction industry um, with a global footprint that, that is continually growing um, and a, a huge uh, user community that keeps us on our toes and keeps our, our products and solutions moving forward. Uh, and we're supported by um, a few thousand people um, that support our clients all around the world. So just to start off with, I'm not sure if people know of RIB or come across it before and know it very well. So I'm gonna give a, a quick rundown on, on where RIB came from. So RIB was founded way back in 1961 in Stuttgart in Germany. Um, RIB were innovators in infrastructure solutions and um, structural design but by the mid nineties, they had developed a product called Ariba, which also included cost estimation and cost management and had become the market leader in those solutions in Germany. So in around about 2000, um, RIB found them in themselves in the situation where they'd saturated the German market with I think around about 45 to 48% of the market share there. So they, they made the decision to start expanding internationally, opening offices in the US uh, and the UK. And then in 2004, um, a large R&D center in uh, Guangzhou, China, which was followed by 10 more regional centers in the US um, more offices in China, Dubai, India, Singapore, Australia, and Hong Kong by 2010. Uh, and in the last 10 years, uh, we've continued to expand that footprint and are now represented in over 25 countries across the world. So down at the bottom of the slide there are just some of the, the logos of the RIB family. Um, RIB has, through its uh, life, um, acquired complementary solutions um, to enhance its offering to the market. So for over 50 years, RIB has been a pioneer in construction innovation, exploring new working methods, new technologies, um, to enhance construction productivity through digitalization. Um, and today more than ever, managing data is critical to taking advantage of digital transformation opportunities uh, in our industry. How we collect, analyze and share data drives process optimization, resource management, people management, increasing productivity and efficiency. However, this is still represents largely how data is managed today in most companies, particularly in construction. Companies are using numerous um, 
disparate software tools, making it very difficult to collaborate, to capture timely data, um, which obviously drives our decision making. So the construction sector though is undergoing major transformation from a silo centric digital landscape. And as to technology solutions have developed from the mid nineties on, uh, the construction se sector adopted point solution architecture. So solutions came out for different silo processes like estimating or design uh, or <clears throat> cost control finance. So those disparate software tools um, mean that the data is residing in multiple disconnected systems. And the only way to effectively connect that data and solutions in, in that kind of landscape um, is via multiple integrations and, and data transfer bring huge challenges and ultimately result in data replication, data loss, and reverting to manual data exchange, typically via complex Excel spreadsheets. So one of a fairly well-known industry research found that of all the data that we capture, the vast majority of it goes unused in the construction industry. And also the majority of it is unstructured. So it takes, a, takes a, a long time to make sense of it. And that means that construction teams spend a lot of their time simply looking for the data. And the cause of this largely is that um, multiple systems carrying diff different bits of data don't easily talk to one another. So today I'm going to talk about M2 um, and how M2 uh, approaches these challenges and also discuss a couple of different scenarios where working in a connected solution environment can make a difference and can keep us working. M2 is a, a complete construction cloud for all stakeholders in all projects connected on a single platform with all data interconnect, interconnected on a central database. So it is cloud-based. It's a cloud-based construction platform, um, also supporting BIM processes, which can be managed all the way through the project lifecycle. And Underpinning um, the platform are um, artificial intelligence and Internet of Things technologies such as HoloLens, which are there to ultimately facilitate predictive analytics and to take advantage of emerging technologies. So the platform itself is accessed through a browser or a, um, and is browser independent. So whichever browser is um, your browser of choice doesn't really matter. It can be accessed over all devices, uh, mobile devices, tablets, laptops, etc. Doesn't matter where you are, as long as you, you have a connection, you, you, can, you can use it. Um, and there are also offline applications for those of us who work in remote locations. This is a, a very high level um, overview of what M2 offers. So every process in the construction life cycle has a place within inside M2. So there's an enterprise element. So the enterprise data layer where your, your master data is managed and held and developed. Um, that's supported by um, document management and workflow. 
so all the external documents that that you typically have to deal with on a day to day are also held centrally and how we interact with that data and that and those documents are managed by a, a workflows and approval layers that that can be laid um, underneath them for the project life cycle everything from managing um, I have to apologize there's a a rubbish van outside my window, which is making a lot of noise. Apologize for that. We all have those challenges at the moment. Um, yes, yeah, so everything in the project life cycle from um, managing building information modeling, from feasibility through design, through estimating, value engineering, and simulation comparison to make sure that we're getting the, the the most effective construction solution to managing that construction project through um, through production. So project management, health and safety on site, managing progress and claims um, and time and how, how that time develops and comparing that time against baselines, procuring work, buying materials, um, manage, managing everything through an online portal and then sitting underneath collecting all that data centrally or having all that data just feed into a central database so that we can build business intelligence and analytics automatically um, off the whole life cycle. So within that life cycle we have many stakeholders so we have uh, external parties who contribute to our data. So design firms, consulting firms, um, clients, vendors, who are all feeding us with data as we go through the, the construction life cycle. Um, so all stakeholders, internal and external, can collaborate in a single cloud platform with a single data source. One of the really, really cool things about M2 is the ability to um, streamline your own workflows or build your own workflows into the platform. They can be embedded into standard business processes. They can be customized any way you want them to be. And they can also uh, trigger tasks to stakeholders within, uh, within the project um, and send alerts, send reports, um, so that people are getting information when they need it, um, as they need it. So to reiterate, M2 is capturing all the data from all the teams during all phases of, of development for all projects, um, which means that the people making the decisions can get Adequate, ad accurate, real-time data from the from the platform, and make decisions on the latest data that's coming out of all the projects, and then we can get total enterprise view of how the organisation is performing. We've got a, had a um, an interesting project running for, for the last um, little while to introduce. Um, product we're calling Mac 2, which is um, a chatbot or a voice assistant. Um, so learning from um, data that, that is feeding into the database, um, the chatbot is able to make suggestions on solutions to particular problems that you might have, or it might be able to find information for you um, it might trigger workflows. Um, so we're quite excited about that, um, which is going to bring sort of the next level of, of um, interaction into the platform. Let's talk about um, different scenarios that might be a challenge in the current environment. 
So I know we, we are having quite a few calls from people who are struggling with traditional server client based solutions and getting access from wherever they are having to stay at the moment. And they, there are many more scenarios that we could talk about, but I'm going to cover things like how do we, how we, how are we capturing progress? Um, how are we reporting on that? Um, how are we interacting with our partners and our vendors? How are we still procuring for, for construction? And how are we managing that process in a remote online environment? And of course, we, we still have construction projects running, so we still have to manage those and manage and control those projects. We still have to manage defects and we still have to communicate with people in an efficient way. So let's take the first scenario of um, collaboration between people on site and the project manager. Uh, we might be interrupted a little bit because our bins are being emptied, but these are the challenges that we face <laughs> today, so I apologize about that. Um, so for progress management, M2 provides a complete um, scheduling solution with many functions for managing progress and control. The scheduling combines a schedule with uh, resource planning. It supports multiple scheduling scenarios and schedule comparison. Line of balance can be introduced um, or location-based scheduling, which is by assigning locations to activities you're able to analyze and avoid space conflicts and resource conflicts um, with trades. There's a multi-level approval workflow so that um, when you go from one scheduled version to another third scheduled version or when you're baselining that whole approval process can, can be traced all the way back in, with each step. We can do real-time comparisons with um, every baseline and we can make comparisons between what we, the schedule that we planned against the actual position of, of the schedule that we are at a particular point in time. And those different um, schedules can be overlaid so we can see that, see that performance visually. We can also introduce um, simulation if we're working in a, um, a BIM scenario, if we have a, a building information models connected to our cost and our schedule, we're able to simulate that on screen and we simulate that all the way through the construction process. Um, at a, at a pre-construction stage, we're looking at uh, different construction scenarios, different um, sequencing scenarios. Um, to figure out what, what the best approach is. And then during production, we're looking at uh, visual progress um, via mobile apps. So we have a, maybe a, a site engineer doing a site walk and overlaying the construction with the BIM model and saying, yes, that's complete, that's complete. That progress data then gets synchronized immediately back to the server. Um, so that everybody involved in making decisions on that progress and reporting on it and claims and, and all that all that kind of thing get that information immediately as it's done and they don't have to be there on site. The final element of, of scheduling is um, getting a view on when we need to tender for things and when we need to buy them and when they need to be delivered on site. So every, every uh, procurement process has key events about when design has to be finished, what the lead time is for the tender process, what the lead time is for uh, delivery uh, once the order has been confirmed. Um, so all that procurement information also gets overlaid onto the schedule. So providing instant information on, on uh, everything to do with procurement.
So we're back to real time um, updates. So just to reiterate, the site engineer provides those real time updates by not only inputting progress, he's also able to add documentation, he's able to add photos, audio, video for each element of progress that he's that he's tracking. It may be a maybe not just one site engineer, it may be several site engineers who have um, the responsibility for different parts of the construction. And those once those are uploaded, they are automatically synchronized into the database and have and everybody involved um, has access to that information. So the project manager can check at any time the actual status of any activity, no matter where he is, whether he's um, sitting in his home office, um, whether he is actually in a, an actual office, it, it doesn't matter. The, the information is synchronized in real time. If it's a if it's a remote situation, the site engineer obviously has to do a, do a visit. He doesn't have connection, but as soon as he's um, has a connection, he plugs in and the information is synchronized. So the traditional project management processes can all be carried out online and they can all be um, supported by powerful workflow functions in M2. So all the RFI process, extension of time, notices, site instructions, they're all available on uh, in an online mobile environment, connected or disconnected. Um, particularly in this part of the world, we, we have uh, many construction projects that, that are so remote they, they don't have a connection, but some as soon as that information is connected, it's distributed to everybody automatically through workflow and through triggered notifications. Okay, the second thing I was going to cover was how, how do we interact with or maintain interaction with our vendors and partners um, in a lockdown scenario. The first M2 provides powerful functions for business partner management. It's a complete um, module within M2. So the business partners are not only limited to um, design firms, contracting firms, consulting firms, governments, but also suppliers, property management companies, literally anybody that you interact with, any company that you do business with, um, or you're looking to do business with are all managed centrally in one module. And all the background information for those uh, business partners can be captured uh, and integrated with pre-qualification processes and performance evaluations uh, on registration and on project performance um, to manage who who your qualified list of partners are. The business partners themselves, or particularly vendors, um, can be linked to particular supply catalogs. You might have framework agreements with, with um, certain vendors with set price lists, which can be managed uh, automatically through material catalogs updated via the vendor's internet catalogs if they need to be which all comes down to, to assisting the procurement process and um, making sure that you're going out to the right people. So this is a short overview of how a vendor might be asked to register through an online portal. Um, so uh, an M2 user can send an invitation to a vendor to register, or it could inversely, it could be an open registration registration portal where uh, any vendor is allowed to register interest to to do work with yourselves. So by entering just a few short details, 
um, we can enhance the vendor registration with, with further details, or we could simply ask that vendor to fill that information for us directly in the system without us having to do anything. And then we, then we just go through a validation procedure. So email sent to the vendor, the vendor clicks on the link, comes into the system and has a very cut down version of um, the business partner area being able only able to see their own details um, and attach their own documents and um, certificates, etc. In the same way, once a vendor is registered in the system, we're able to communicate with them. So that communication should could be on different levels. We could ask them to renew um, document details, so maybe insurance has run out or they need a new certification, um, upload it into the system. Um, the expiry dates on the documents will give us light, um, proactive notifications or they could send them directly out to, to the vendor to say, hey, you know, your insurance runs out in two weeks time, you need to upload the latest insurance form. Um, or it could be something simple like, um, an RFI, I just need some information from the vendor. So through the business partner module, you can you have direct links to send communication to your vendor and to receive it. But all the time, all that vendor information that, that's coming into the system is automatically feeding into the central database. So it's continually building up our, our internal intelligence. Okay. Tendering management, it's, it's, uh, it follows on really from, from business partner management is that we also want to um, interact with our vendors uh, and we want to make sure that they can do the work that we want them to do and they want, we want them to, to receive um, prices and, and quotes and award them contracts, right? So. So all through the, the tender process, we can manage every step online. So for, first of all, potential bidders can submit their digital bidding documents through the portal. Um, a purchasing manager might review those documents. He might review the bid. He might co correspond with documents online. Um, he might then request uh, pricing from that vendor. So then he can receive the quotes, but he can do um, bid comparisons um, to make sure that, that he's getting uh, the best market price. And then finally, during the execution stage, all the records about the performance and evaluation are saved in the, in the platform for future reference and for future decision making. So these records and information can simplify the selection process of potential bidders in the next tender. So it's a thing with the data platform is that the more data you collect, the better your decisions become in the future. Okay. So reiterating the tender process. So during e the e-tender preparation, you, the recommended bidder selections can be made based on evaluation scoring, they can, of which are based on uh, previous performance. They can also be based on um, registration governance um, criteria like which areas do you operate in, um, what's your health and safety policy like, um, do you have a certain number of, of regional employees, if that's important? And all the, those criteria can be used to select who you're going to go out to tender to, to, tend to and that, that's all available online. Um, we can also view vendor cash flow forecasts based on uh, vendor schedules um, and the vendor costs that come back in. And finally, then when we look at the analysis, 
that can be all done online. The contracts can be awarded um, directly from the platform. And what you know, I think we're not going to cover that today, but um, once those contracts have been awarded, the, the full process of managing that contract through its life cycle, uh, including um, managing the, the period performance of that particular vendor, uh, managing the payment and claims, um, and any variations that, have, that are incurred during that contract, all that process is also managed online. That's just one scenario that I'm not going to cover today. But I am going to cover in the next process, I'm going to cover how we would manage uh, a payment workflow. Okay. So during, during construction, um, we've talked about monitoring progress, but we also have to manage that claim and the verification of that claim and how that payment gets processed. So we have a thing called PES. We should have put, probably put the real words in there. So PES stands for um, a progress entry sheet. So however we build up the, the contract, the contract line items, we're going to monitor progress based on those line items. So um, at the end of each reporting period, we're going to expect um, a vendor to submit a claim on a progress entry sheet, which we are going to verify. So that claim can come into the system. The vendor can use the system to input the claim. Uh, then the project manager or the commercial manager is going to verify that that claim is accurate or not. So there might be a process of going back to the vendor and saying, no, I'm sorry, you, you're claiming too much. Um, so once that, that claim is verified, that's going to generate uh, an invoice. So that, that invoice is going to be created automatically through a workflow. And that invoice then is also going to go through a verification pro process, also supported by workflow. And there'll be certain individuals within your organization who are responsible for that operation. And once that invoice gets verified and it's approved, it'll be sent directly to the finance ERP. And that complete payment workflow process and the history and the order trail of that is captured directly in, in M2. So we have that complete uh, order trail to follow back if we need to in the future. In this day and age with, with um, modern solutions like M2, of course, we don't have any de defects, but in the real world, um, we have to manage um, defects and how those defects get rectified. So M2 provides on-site recording of defects. And I think even in lockdown, we still have to be on-site uh, to <laughs> record those defects. Um, but we support that with, with a mobile app. So site supervisor can do a site walk with a mobile app, take his photos, make notes, assign it to um, whichever vendor he thinks is responsible for that, that defect. Um, and that then is automatically sent directly uh, up to the M2 platform. Offline mode is supported. Um, so it's exactly the same scenario. We record the photos, they, they are stored on the mobile device. When the mobile device is connected um, to the cloud, those details are automatically uploaded. So all that, all that um, defect data is held centrally um, in, in a defects module with inside M2, which enables us to report directly off that. So I haven't talked much yet about the reporting layer um, inside M2, but because all the data is held in the central database, we're able to leverage um, 
BI tools like Power BI, which is integrated in M2. Um, we also have our own in-house um, BI solution called Datapine, which pulls data out of the database from whichever business process it needs it needs to come from, and presents that in a in, in a dashboard or a report that can be distributed to, to um, people who need to report on the data or people who need to make decisions on it. So just another view of the, the similar information. So we have synchronization. So in this case, we're, look, we're looking at a 3D model. Um, so what's not shown in here is is another project that, that we're releasing soon which it, which is a site walk using hololens um so if you imagine that that model picture there you could literally be walking through through the site the model object in the hololens contains all the information in the database so it contains any previous defects that might have been there whether there's been a rectified defect who was responsible which vendor installed that particular object, um, which makes the whole the whole process a lot a lot easier with less um, less room for human error uh, in that assignment. So that that can also be enhanced then by the by um, videos, um, that then goes into a, a defect uh, workflow process, so that it gets assigned and that creates a report that report goes to somebody for approval um, and that may be not just someone that may be different people depending depending on where it is in the project or uh, which vendor is responsible for it all those different scenarios can be built into the workflow okay final scenario i want to talk about is um, simply communication I think communication is probably the most important thing at the moment for people to stay in contact with one another and to be able to interact and record the information that that, that uh, is flowing between one party and another. So M2 is already integrated with Microsoft Teams. So all the team and members who have authorized access to M2 can also create a team. Uh, they can share documents, they can share links to a model, they can share report views, um, save new changed data, save communication notes. Um, so this feature is going to make communication among all the different parties much easier. So in all instances where I'm saying share, it's I'm, I'm in M2, I want somebody else to, to comment on this document that I'm looking at, click a link and it sends it directly to them via Teams um, so they can in interact um, with that. So Teams helps facilitate daily work. Um, I know certainly in our scenario, we, we pretty much live on Teams at the moment. So we can communicate with chat, voice, video, um, we can create documents, we can share them, we can co-edit them. The data can, can be accessed in Teams. It can also be shared with external parties if we need to. Um, it can also come into, we can interact directly with the BIM model if we need to. And we can report uh, or generate reports in M2 based on all the, this communication that, that's happening. Okay, so how do we facilitate this, um, the ease of access to taking advantage of uh, the opportunities of, of this digital environment? So M2, um, as I said before, it's a complete construction cloud. We have spent uh, a lot of effort in making it easier for um, customers to adopt um, the platform um, more rapidly. So 
we've used best practice standards and workflows and templates and built those already into into the platform um, we have in built um, out of the box integration with um, BIM 360 for design review um, for Revit applications for modeling some other model some of all the, the standard 3D modeling tools or the, or the common ones anyway. We have out of the box integration with um, Office 365. Uh, I think it's fairly standard people using that now. And it's also scalable. So we, we have a, an open API architecture. So if there is something or some other enterprise solution that needs to interact uh, with M2 data or we need to push M2 data say to a, a, a finance system, um, the the architecture allows for for all those easy integrations to happen. We also support the adoption process with virtual labs, so a little bit like a little bit like this, but not like this, with more interaction. Um, we're able to conduct those workshops online wherever people are, even if they they're sitting in their uh, on their dining room table. So because we've we've spent a lot of time in um, pre-configuring uh, a lot of the standard um, operation of the system and a lot of the standard data that everybody will use, um, we expect people to be up and running um, much quicker than they could before. Uh, I think in a traditional scenario, the, you might have to wait six weeks before somebody del delivers a server for you to be able to, to install software on. So typically we, we expect to provide um, an instance environment um, <clears throat> in around about 48 hours. Um, and we, we have done that already, um, so we know that it works. We're not saying that there isn't other data that you still need to load into the system for, um, for the way that you particularly operate, but to be able to switch on the system and say, okay, now I'm ready, I can put my data straight in and I can go, um, enables people to, to start um, fairly quickly um, getting into the system. All right, um, and that was my final slide. Um, the next, next I'm gonna open this up for q and if anybody's got uh, any questions they'd like to ask. Um, on anything that I've that I've said, I'm just going to try and figure out how that works. Um, there is a Q and A thing on the top of the screen, and the, on the attendees, I can allow everyone to talk, uh, which I'm going to do now. <laughs> so. Seems. <coughs> I think, can you hear me, Neil? I can hear you, Andrew, yes. Yep, so there's an unmute button if everyone just see unmute button. When you un go to unmute everybody, it should work, mate. Okay. So if anybody has got any questions on, on any of that, um, please unmute yourself and uh, and I'll do my best to, to, to answer. But, It, um, it, it might be worth adding, Neil, as well, just you know, for the people that are on the line um, who can sometimes be a little bit worried in these, uh, these times that it would be hard to deploy a system remotely. Um, we, we are still delivering because, again, because it's a cloud-based solution, it does enable us to practically do all of the configuration um, remotely that we need to for customers' needs. Yes, it gets some challenges as we go through and have to do discovery sessions and work out what everything looks like. Um, can take a little bit longer to do that, but we're successfully doing that over Teams and integration with projects like or products like Miro to actually capture visually what that looks like um, for defining workflows and things. But it really does open up the opportunity now for us still to be delivering 
um, because we are a cloud-based solution, there's, there's no need for us to be on site um, and having to go into your offices, your desktops and be doing configuration. All of that configuration happens in the cloud um, so that it makes it very simple for us to control and manage as we deploy. Sorry, Neil, just sort of add that in as well for people that may be worried. Thanks for that, Andrew. Um, yep, um, I've got one question. Um, can you tell us some uh, other organisations that are, are using this software? Um, in, um, we talk to... Uh, you're right. Sorry? So particularly in in this region, so my region is uh, Australia and New Zealand. Um, we have a few different types of organisations that are using them too, um, and you know, project management and collaboration, um, and they vary from uh, utilities companies, um, general contractors, developers. Um, government organizations. Um, so we don't, uh, we, we work across all sectors. Um, so I, we can certainly provide names, but probably not in, not in this forum. <laughs> not, in, not in an open forum, just in case. Yeah. Uh, it, it, if there aren't any other questions, then I'll, I will um, end the session. But um, I'll just put a few of the contact details um, on the screen. Also, Billy, um, at the end of the session, he'll be uh, sending out a communication to everybody that attended. Um, have um, contact deal details on if, uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us. Um, we'll do our best to respond in a timely manner. Um, yes, so thank you for attending. Um, and I hope, I hope it was informative um, and you got something out of it. Um, uh, maybe see you at the next one. All right. Thanks, Neil. Thank you very much.